Hello and welcome to another episode of Wanna Be Entrepreneur. My name is Tiago, your Portuguese software developer that six months ago decided to quit his job just to focus 100% in this side project and now he's making a whopping amount of 25 euros per month. This is the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. And before we get into today's episode, I want to give a big shout out to the two newest members of Wannabe Entrepreneur, being the first one, Maxwell Davis. Maxwell, thank you so much for supporting this podcast. You are among the other members, the reason why I'm able to continue doing this and you give me the motivation to continue doing. So thank you so much, Maxwell, for your support. And the other member is Antimo. Antimo, uh, thank you so much also to joining our community or for joining our community. And uh, Antimo is also already an active member of our virtual co-working space for bootstrappers. And uh, he is a designer and he's doing a great, super cool project. And um, I don't know, if you're like me and you are a terrible at designer, you look at Photoshop and you think, okay, this is black magic. And Antimo is teaching people on how to use another tool that is not Photoshop. The name, the name of this tool is Figma that is much, much easier to use. And he's basically doing great teaching content for people like me, for other bootstrappers that need design and are absolutely beginners. And he's doing great videos, so you should definitely check it out. And both of them are now also part of our Slack channel, our virtual co-working space for bootstrappers. So for a price of four euros per month, which is not that much, you can be part of this community. You can support this podcast and we can all hang out in the Slack channel. And there's other entrepreneurs there. There's people that I interviewed that are also there and you can get great mentorship. You can get support and speak with other like-minded people as well as participating in the events that we are making. So I'm waiting for you also to join. The link will be in the description. And another thing that happened this week was that I was able to reach 250 followers on Twitter, which is amazing. And I promised you that if I would ever reach 250, I would basically do a section in this podcast where I would read the names or the usernames of each follower so stay tuned until the end of this episode because i will try to come up with an interesting way to do so and now without any further ado let's start this episode so i just moved into a new apartment and to a new country which is a new old country because i'm originally from portugal I moved to Germany and now I'm back in Portugal and I'm living in Lisbon, in a, a specific neighborhood of Lisbon and we picked this neighborhood for a reason. It has a lot of stores, a lot of life and you can basically walk anywhere, you don't need a car. And I love to just walk around the neighborhood and find new stores, new very niche amazing stores and I was walking after work, which is normally already quite late. And I saw a store selling coffee. And I was amazed because, you know, I love coffee. So I just got in the store and I saw that there were thousands of different varieties, maybe not thousands, hundreds of different varieties of coffee. And I started chatting with the owner, trying to get some recommendations. And he was so passionate, so passionate about coffee that really connected this passion or transferred this passion to me. And you could really see that he was in love with his profession, with what he was doing. And it got me super excited to be part of this neighborhood. Then I asked him, for how long uh, did he have this store here? And he said that the store was open for more than 60 years. <laughs> Six zero. That's absurd. Like, as a millennial, I cannot imagine that. I cannot imagine people having business that lasts more than 10 years. Now imagine having a small store for 60 years. His family started this store and he continues doing it. And I found it absolutely amazing. 
Then I told him that I just moved in, that I had just moved into this neighborhood. And he welcomed me and he said, this is the best neighborhood in Lisbon. And this made me remember of a funny story that also happened to me long, long time ago. And I'm not the kind of guy that normally remembers these old stories or I, I don't even know what's the earliest memory I have. But funny enough, this one somehow got stuck in my head. It was professions day in my school. I was probably in the fifth or sixth grade. And there were a couple of grown-ups <laughs> coming and speaking about their professions. And one told us that he used to study in the same school as we did. And uh, because of that, that he studied there, it was the best school in the world. And he was not this kind of self, full of himself kind of person. He was just telling that that's the mindset we need to have. Of course, that we know that maybe there are better schools. But if this is the school we are at, if this is the product we are working at, you need to have the mindset of a winner. And you have to think about, this is the best school in the world because I'm here and I'm making it the best school in the world. And that's basically the same of uh, what this guy said. This is the best uh, neighborhood in, in the city because we are here, right? So we are making it the best neighborhood in the city. It's, it's a really hard mindset to transfer to entrepreneurship because it's very hard, especially for me, and I guess if you're not super self-confident, to trust in yourself and trust in your product. The imposter syndrome kicks in very often. And I, I'm not lying by saying that every week I have some really low moments. Moments when I think that I want to quit, that I will never make it. And uh, this week that happened in the, on Friday actually. And I recorded my thoughts and what was going through my mind then. So uh, let's hear it. It's uh, 8.40 p.m. on a Friday. And uh, I don't feel like going out. I have some friends here uh, visiting in Portugal. But I just don't feel like going out. Because before I used to love... Fridays in the weekend, but now I just feel that it's just one more week where I didn't achieve anything significant, I would say. And I don't know, I feel that I have tried so many things and nothing works, nothing catches fire. And now I feel very like sad or like a little bit depressed, I would say. And I don't want to go out and I don't want to do anything. Uh, yeah, just thought I would share this. I, I thought that I was not ready to go for the weekend. I thought that I had to work much, much more. And it's hard because sometimes you, of course, have a family, you have a partner, you have friends, and you don't have the energy to hang out with them. Because you think that you have to insist in working. It's uh, interesting because I was also reading uh, Dagobert's tweet this week. And he said that he is now trying to prioritize more his health. Because he feels that his body is weaker than before. Because he's putting too much effort into his projects. And uh, that's something that we really have to be aware of. And uh, that's kind of also the reason why I try to create this co-working space for bootstrappers. It's not only a way for me to make money. It's just something that I really believe. Because being surrounded by like-minded people, it's great because of two things. First of all, some of the struggles you are going through, they already went through. And they can actually teach you how they did it. So you basically work more efficiently. And second of all, and uh, I think that's also important, you can chat with them and they can advise you and they can tell you that it's okay to rest and it's okay to take time off. And uh, that's kind of my lesson 
my lifestyle of an entrepreneur lesson this week and uh, it's very hard it's very hard to do that but i'm always uh, trying to take some time on the weekend for my friends and for my partner and for me i think that's really really important and uh, try to exercise trying to do all of that it's definitely crucial and this was the section of the lifestyle of an entrepreneur today and uh, now i want to give you some updates on my projects and i have some really interesting things happening this week that i really want to share with you and the first one is the web store of my dad so a couple of uh, i guess weeks or even months ago i built a web store for my father he's also an entrepreneur he has a small business and uh, i did i think one or two episodes about it you can just go to the website or i will just link it in the description and uh, we did a, a store i used the um, press the shop it's super cool software it's open source so software it's quite cheap because i'm basically only paying for the server all the rest is free and it has an absurd, amazing backend. So he is able to manage everything from inventory to invoices to everything basically in that backend. So we're very happy. And it took a while for my dad to basically have the time to put all of the inventory, all of the stocks in the web store because he has a lot of products and it takes some time but now it's finally there and it's really going great there's uh, already a lot of new orders coming and in the beginning my dad thought that uh, no customer because he has a b2b business right so he sells to other businesses and he thought that uh, his customers would not create an account but they immediately did so before what he used to do was when their customers would uh, ask for the inventory he would send 90 or 100 pictures on uh, whatsapp and then they would have to go through the pictures and send back the pictures that they wanted now they can easily pick their order and it's it's working super great so far we already got i think about 10 orders we got people repeating the orders and uh, everything works super fine you can also kind of change the state of the order so when uh, people buy, then they have to do a wire transfer. That's basically the paying method. Uh, at the moment, we'll also add PayPal and all of that afterwards, but step by step. And uh, you can update the status. So it's uh, first state is waiting for transfer. Once you get the wire transfer, you yourself can update to preparing the order and then delivered. So... I have to say, so far, I'm super happy with the store. And now I'm thinking, how can I improve it? And I really want to use this as a case study to bring a business that it was still in the pre-internet world to the new internet world. I want to apply my digital marketing knowledge. I want to create uh, or basically gather all the emails of the clients and send some uh, promotions and i, I really want to work uh, with with my dad on this so i'm super excited about it and i'll keep you posted on uh, the new things that we want to do and uh, i'm i'm quite happy and uh, let's get to change it this week i have something also that's really interesting because for the first time in a while the seo has really picked up and um, it, it takes a while it, it's really worth it but it takes a while for seo to pick up you have to write a lot of things and uh, my partner she's a um, researcher and she's the one that wrote a lot of the blog posts and she did an amazing job because she really brought this uh, researcher mindset to the game and uh, he did a lot of great pieces where she did a lot of research and they're really informative about uh, multiple climate change related topics. And the one that is actually picked up and now is having about 30, 40, 50 li uh, views per day is Are lithium batteries good for the environment? Yes, a lot of people are searching for that, which makes sense. And she did an amazing job 
and a lot of people are reading it and now actually when you search on google our blog post appears in the first or top five positions and you can really see the difference because we have now more people in the blog than in the app <laughs> so i'm thinking okay can i make money with this because now that's kind of always my mindset how can i make money in things so i'm kind of thinking that maybe i i can try to add also a store or affiliate to the blog and i'm also thinking on other blog posts so recently what i did was i went on fiverr and I found someone that for, I think, 11 bucks wrote also an amazing piece about the sustainable aviation fuel. It's really interesting. And it's a topic that I think that there's not enough information about it. So I'm trying to use Google Trends plus my knowledge in the community plus my Google searches to see where are we lacking content. And I'm then trying to write that content. And I've, I've seen already some people reading that article and I will let you know if uh, it also picks up. But I'm really happy with SEO. I think SEO for bootstrappers is probably one of the best ways for you to have a kind of a recurring source of users. You know, everyone speaks about recurring source of income, but to have a recurring source of income, you need a recurring source of new users. And uh, if you use Twitter, if you use all of these social media, they are great, but they require a lot of work. They require hours of your day, always engaging with the community. And by having SEO, I'm basically getting users without doing anything. You know, I wrote the blog post once and then I just have to rest and uh, enter in maintenance mode. So I'm doing the same for the podcast. As I told you uh, in the last episode, I continue to ask people on Fiverr or basically... Yeah, pay them for to write this uh, blog post, and I'm having a lot of blog posts on the Wannabe Entrepreneur podcast website too. And uh, I hope that this will bring a lot of uh, new users. All right, and that's enough now for the project updates. Now let's get into the last section of this episode, which is tips and tricks for bootstrappers. And today I want to speak about product hunt, and I have some kind of love hate relationship with product hunt i think that the concept is amazing and i've heard a lot of great things and people having a lot of success with their launches in product hunt but i have never had any proper success with it so i'm never sure if it's my product if it's my approach if i have to do things differently so for the ones that do not know what product hunt is, is basically a platform for you to launch your product. It doesn't need to be a tech product, but I think most of them are tech related and it's quite well known in the bootstrapping community. So a lot of people basically create their profile, they launch on product hunt, they get their product trending and they are able to get a lot of views and even new customers from product hunt. If you remember my chat with Kavya, she was able to get, I think, 900 new users in her platform resume from their launch on Product Hunt. And uh, I've launched already a couple of times, as I told you, it doesn't didn't work so well. But I've been learning about Product Hunt, and I think there are some interesting things I learned recently that might be useful for you. So let's start with your uh, product journey within Product Hunt. So you start by creating your product profile. So you basically have to add your description, you add the title, some nice images. You can also add the makers. So basically, if you have co-founders, you can also add them to the product and you can, of course, add a link to your product and then you can schedule your lunch. You can also launch it right away but there, there's reasons for you to schedule. I will let you know in a second. But then it's basically launched. And once it's launched, you can start getting upvotes. And first, when you launch, you are in the newest product section and you are there for up to 24 hours, let's say. And then if you have enough upvotes, you get bumped to the featured section. And that's where you want to be because that's basically the products that will be in the homepage. And you'll get a lot of new organic users coming from product hunt and to your product. And that's basically your goal, to get into the feature product. After your initial launch, of course, that your product will still be 
on product hunt but a lot of people told me that they couldn't find it so they couldn't find for instance when i share the wannabe entrepreneur or when i launch the wannabe entrepreneur podcast on product hunt and people would just search for it and i tried it myself and if you search for it the wannabe entrepreneur won't show up and the reason is because there is a default filter for featured products only so since wannabe entrepreneur never reached the feature product category when you search for it since it's activated to only show featured products then you won't able to see my my product so you actually have to go to filters and you have to untick the featured products only and then you will be able to find my project and uh, that was a bit annoying i one, one thing about product and is that they're really great with their user support so you can make any questions you want and i did make those questions and they were super fast getting back to me and getting all the answers that i i uh, was asking but I also gave them the feedback that for me that didn't make much sense because a lot of people complained about it. So here are now a couple of tricks that I've learned about having a successful lunch that could be useful for you. Even though I was never able to actually launch a successful, have a successful lunch. And uh, the first one is you need to have a community already ready. And uh, this is the same reason why it's important for Twitter, for social media, for Reddit, because most of these algorithms work with number of upvotes in the last amount of time possible. So you launch and you have basically up to 24 hours to share your product to the world and get your product bumped to the feature category. But of course, that this depends on many upvotes you are having. If you already have a community, then you can just share it with your community. By the way, it's important for you not to share directly the link. It's it's ideally to just tell them to go to the newest products and find your product and upvote because they have some kind of magic algorithm that detects if a lot of people are coming directly to the link and they will kind of damage you or damage your lunch because of that. So you have to be careful with that. But yeah, then you just share with your community and you'll immediately get a lot of upvotes and then it's easier for you to get into the features section, which is the most important thing. One thing that is also really important is to schedule your lunch. And the reason why you should do that is because normally you have up to 24 hours of airtime. So this means that you will have up to 24 hours visibility of your product. Your product will be in the newest product section for that amount of time. And that 24 hours counts from San Francisco time. So you want to launch your product at midnight San Francisco time so that you have a maximum number of hours in the newest product section. And if you use the scheduled functionality of Product Hunt, they actually show you how long your product will be visible. So that's why I think we should always use that functionality because it's very useful. And last but not least, I want to talk about relaunching. So when I firstly launched Change It, the product was still very in early stages. I didn't have a community and I had like basically three, four upvotes. So it was basically nothing. And after a month or so, I decided to launch again. It's okay to launch again or to relaunch, but Product Hunt says that you should wait about six months from one launch to the other unless you have a really really game changer new feature or something that is completely new and it's always better to relaunch so basically you can still have your uh, old launching page and just revamp it but i've also tried to just basically trying to delete the old one and just create a new one and it was a bit weird at first because when i did that with a the podcast then i had two wannabe entrepreneurs who were basically wannabe entrepreneur one and wannabe entrepreneur two so when people search for it they would find both and the only way for you to get it deleted is to send a message to them so i used their chat functionality and i asked them to delete the first one they did it was super easy super fast but that's how you do it and uh, to be honest, when I asked Alexandra in our interview, if you remember, she told me that it's better to relaunch. For me, I still don't know. Maybe both work. But one thing for sure, you can also launch different parts of your product. For instance, in my podcast, I can launch the podcast in its entirety or I can just launch a new episode. I also recently launched the Bootstrapper community that I have within Wannabe Entrepreneur, right? The 
the co-working space for bootstrappers i learned just that so that's also okay you just have to be creative and maybe you can even launch parts of your business and now that you have all the tips and tricks it will be much easier for you to launch so i hope this information about product fund was useful for you and that's basically it for today's episode but i didn't forget in the beginning of this episode i made you a promise that i would read all the 250 twitter followers that i have and uh, i came up with a little melody it's, it's really bad <laughs> it's probably the silliest thing i've ever done in this podcast so i guess most of you won't last until the end of the song so i'll say goodbye to you right now and uh, if you want to become a member everything the link will be in the description and uh, yeah let's let's get over with this let's go 259 followers on Twitter. I will say all of their names. Let's go. Yeah. Check Tiago, Levi Strobe, Tanjai, Shankar, Fawaz, African Boy, Kima, Vivek, Alche Lowy, Will Smiles, Ismri Grupra, Sana, Scott Gorba, Flon Pop, LXL, Sabrina, Wolfgang, Vichess, Startup King, This Person Doesn't Exist. Mira, Rx Freelancer, Efe, Kati, Random Cast, Rashi, Frederick, Podcast Audio, Kellen, Podcast, Shigadesh, Austin, Carolina, Jerry, Shuan, The Bread and the Baby, Ravi, The Splain Yourself, Podcast, Stephen, Min, Erish, Tom Bartel, Podcast.com, Karina, Just Masquel, The Breast of Soul, Savo Fer, Digital Folks, Carol, Magua, Ebony, The Mercs, Sayer, CXD, Studio, Bohan, Biafra, Fruiterism, Dane, The 415 Podcast, Louisa, Hack, Jason Waters, Rachel, Samaya, Parishnet, Bai, Klaman, Tom, Creative Solutions, Godfrey, Erin Bassa, Elmas, Asarum Skills, Sabu Stresha, Yuri, Attitude Theory, Betterman Design, Aoi, Masters of Scale, Brian Hales, Mindscape Podcast, Gary, Abdu, Carvel, Corbin, Judy, Road O'Neill, Contap Lebeb, Johnny Butler, Jeffer, Abraham Ventura, Silver Knight, The Paradise Elf Podcast, Chris Ficken, Bran Hoyas, Elf Talks with JD, DYI Podcast, Kaylin, Ram, Gally, Misha, Mikhail, Saskia, Perman, Nurlan, Normanov, Demonologist, Joanna, Cage, Kudan, Sam, TP, Siket, Mebourgois, Martin, Eugene, Wit, Up Enough, Some Other Assets, Change It, Kevin, Databoard, Leo, Yonuts, Saia, Shuhi, Presferent, Shashki, Timothy, Adiga, Jessica, Adrian, Dripstone, Florian, Bruzu, Jakob, Dibo, Zencaster, Miguel, Pranev, Podcast, Vitor, Amar, Jema, Sergey, Imra, Borslav, 24 Blog, Edward, Red Finders, Green Zero, Jeff, Christoph, Pussy Power, Santiago, Darley Black, Alexandra, Chris Wong, Lee Ann, Andy Grunwald, Nico Fischian, Anastasia, Charlotte, Startup Analytics, Bastian, Lob Todd, Pedro Lopes, Stephanie, Ricardo, Art All Around Us, Gerlis Nadal, Indy Worldwide, Julie Carford, Nelson, AD, Gautan Varish, Chris Smith, Carl, Lily, Niraf, Sofia Vash, Karpash, Haps, Parasor, Denis Piles, Libby, Alvar, Fernand La Rosa, Orlean, Dagobert, Zare, Jeff Adamson, Tim Soren, Lucas Zegge, Accidental Gears, Owen, We Love Podcast, The Grey, Tweet Jackal, Atlantic Obscura, Ravinder, Like a Scope, Take Gondo, Alex Manu, Cinebarton, Arushon, Lucy Barrett, Joaquin, 
Tyler Barker, Kavya, Zadewul, Arcane, Yurgut, Bayun, York, Webmeter, Frederick, Jorgan, Joss, The Blockimist, Sophie, The Missing B, Jens Nilsson, David, Maker Notes, Stefan, Alexander Chimirano, Sholem, Deeply, Bogdan, Catalin, Amat, Alexis, Diuk, Isaac, Romain, Zachary, Tom, Jonant, Remote, Dino, Amanad, Jason Raw, Taras, Gert, Arvid Karl, Kint, Luca, Big B, Jawad, Antimo, Yaad, Florian, Yawan, Kudip, Brian, Avisha, Maxwell, Davis, Quentin, Rick, Mark, Earl, Juan, Yawn, and the last of them, Book of Lies Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this last section of Wanna Be Entrepreneur. And if you want to support the podcast, consider becoming a member. It's four euros per month, and you get access to our virtual co working space for Bootstrapper, a place where you can find like minded people, other entrepreneurs, and you can also get some mentorship and you can get support and motivation. We are waiting for you there. And of course, if you get a chance, please share this podcast with your entrepreneur friends and give a nice review you on apple podcast this was another wannabe entrepreneur see you on thursday